Welcome, welcome. Good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time it is for you. Welcome to another episode of AA Illustrates. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at bot building with pre-built bots and that's kind of a generic title. I'm going to get into what exactly that means here in a second. First off, what is AA Illustrates? Uh, it's an interactive social session. So this is live on LinkedIn right now. We might be streaming it elsewhere. Um, but we want those who are interested in RPA, robotic process automation, specifically with Automation Anywhere, to come out, ask questions, learn about Automation Anywhere, learn about the different tools, learn about the different applications therein. Um, we have a lot of ideas for content. We want you to give that feedback. You may have seen this past week there was a, a poll on Twitter to solicit your ideas for what you want to see. So um, definitely let us know what benefits you the most. Slide into the DMs of the, uh, the social team. Let them know what you're interested in. Tweet us at automation, N-E-W-H. I think that's it. Uh, look it up first, though, to be sure. Uh, first off, who does this guy think he is? I am the host of this week, Micah Smith, at Micah Dan Smith on Twitter. I am a developer evangelist at Automation Anywhere. So that means I get to geek out with this product and do all kinds of really fun stuff and get people excited about what you can do with it. I'm a former COE lead at a Fortune 100 financial services company, so I've been doing this stuff for a little bit. Uh, I'm also a RPA and document imaging enthusiast, so I like to build this side, yeah. I like to build fun bots just to show how you can use the tool. You know, for me, I think the, the best way to learn something new is to find something you're legitimately interested in or something that you have a problem with and see how you can solve it with the software. And so I did that with New Year's accountability. I bought a car from uh, an RPA bot that I built. So stuff like that. Um, definitely check those out. I also write a lot of articles for our blog. So um, feel free to review those as well. Last week, uh, we did a live bot build. And I think the feedback on that was really good. We had a lot of people sending messages, leaving comments. So that was really fun. We'll talk about some questions that people had as a follow up from that. We also want to talk about the high level bot building process. And this is my personal bot building process. Uh, we'll talk about what that means and uh, how you can possibly replicate that if you find it valuable. And then we'll also talk about bot store a little bit. And we're going to talk about bot store from a consumer perspective as well as from a developer perspective. And I think both of those perspectives are, are interesting. And I think that as a bot builder or even as a business analyst, you'll probably find yourself in kind of both of those categories at the same time. And so we'll talk about what that means and, uh, and how you can interact with bot store as well. So first off, uh, leftover questions from last week. I know we didn't get to take questions live, um, but last week the URL is there at the top. Um, that is the, the page that we used for our um, kind of demo bot build that we did. Uh, the image to right here is the actual page that we were using. And so uh, a lot of people sent messages or questions that like, hey, I can't log in, what's, what's not working? Like, well, the, the exercise itself is the login page. So if you got to this, then you are there and you're ready to go. The uh, username and, or email address, I should say, and password are there listed on the side. Um, that's all that the lab was. It was just to learn how to launch that application, fill in a couple input fields, and then click a button to submit. And if you didn't get a chance to watch last week's session and build that bot with us live, definitely go back and check it out. It's not like something that gets stale because of content and it's old or something like that. It's still very relevant. It's still very much a fun lab to do, especially if you don't have background with RPA. It was designed to be a very intro lab, get you comfortable with the tool, even if you've never used it before. So definitely go and check that one out. It's on the Automation Anywhere LinkedIn page. Um, and you could just search off of the hashtag AA Illustrates and you should be able to find it. But the lab itself was to walk through, fill in the username or the email address, I should say, and the password and then click that sign in button. And if you didn't get a chance to do it or you did, if you remember, we, we did it in two different ways. We first used the recorder step to capture the, uh, the fields that we needed to fill that content into. And then we did it another way where we started to use some of the keystrokes. Um, and so that was kind of like a, just talking about how there's usually multiple ways to solve the same kind of problem and the pros and cons of that. So definitely check that one out. 
This week, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is my own personal bot building process. And this is not to celebrate me. This is just to share kind of what, what I do, what I'm going through building a new bot. And I wanted to demonstrate that so that as you're starting your RPA journey or as you're maybe an experienced developer, but you just want to refine your process a little bit, you can at least see how I'm doing it. Uh, the other thing I'll say here is I don't know how you're doing it. So you may have a, a cooler way of doing it or, or a more concise way. Share that. Let us know. Um, you know, reply back in the comments and let us know how your bot building process is different. You could be doing things better and we'll start talking about your way. Uh, so the first is I always start with a problem statement, right? What is the problem I'm actually trying to solve? And for last week, just using it as an example, we were just trying to do a login and we were trying to figure out like, okay, how do I get the login to work? How do I fill in the username and password? How do I submit? So I always start with whatever the problem statement is. And that usually leads to me doing some kind of brainstorming. And, you know, for the solution last week, if we're filling out an input form, I'm going to think like, all right, what are the different ways I could do this? One, I could do the capture. Two, I could do the, uh, the keystroke entry approach. And then what are the pros and cons of that, right? And we talked about like for keystroke entry, the cons of doing that might be that my keystrokes start firing off faster than the application I'm trying to automate is able to keep up with. And so I might have to add some delays in there. Um, some of the cons for doing the, the capture approach or the record approach that we did was, you know, if the page structure changes a lot, uh, that could cause problems. And so when I'm brainstorming those kind of solutions, I want to think about okay, if those are possible problems that occur, what can I do as I'm building this to mitigate that? And it might be doing some advanced XPath for my captures. And that way I'm working off of an object ID or I'm working off of uh, some other method of finding the actual input. Maybe that's using like a contained statement for my XPath instead of just the full XPath from the root of the document. So when I'm doing my brainstorming, I'm going to think through different solutions like that. The brainstorming is really important because as you become more familiar with the tool and as you're more familiar with the different actions and, and commands, then the brainstorming becomes a little bit more fun and a little bit more advanced because you can think through like, all right, these are all the tools that I have. How can I use those to solve this specific problem or mitigate this one particular issue? And so as you're thinking through and doing your brainstorming and as you continue to learn the tool and learn about those different commands, uh, this is really, you know, a valuable time as you start to, to think through the problem. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm either going to build a checklist or some kind of diagrams. And we did that last week. I went through and I, I made a kind of a dummy diagram of like, all right, this is the stuff we need to do. We need to make sure we, you know, go to this page. We need to go through and uh, fill in the input, fill in the um, uh, email address, fill in the password, and then click the submit button. And so I always try to like either do a checklist or some kind of diagram so that I'm keeping myself honest. And as I'm doing that brainstorming that I'm making sure to take care of all the things I said I was going to. So it's very important to do some kind of documentation there to make sure that you're, you know, you're not forgetting the, the ideas that you had as you try to implement them. The next thing I'm going to do is actually quite surprising for a lot of people is I go and check bot store. And I check bot store whenever I'm building a new build because I want to see, A, is there something that someone has already built that can help to accelerate my build process so I don't have to build all this stuff from scratch? And B, is there something that I can take inspiration from, right? So are there some bots that are doing something similar or doing something unique in a way that I hadn't thought of doing it? And I'll usually go and look at bot store to see what kind of stuff is available, uh, what kind of bots that I might be able to leverage in a part of my build. And that way I can build more quickly, right? So uh, a good example of that is I was building a bot recently for Salesforce for some internal stuff. There's a bot on bot store that does Salesforce automation uh, using the Salesforce API. If I were to build the bot myself, I'm not super familiar with the Salesforce API. So I would have been stuck trying to do recordings or object clones uh, against Salesforce. But when I can use that Salesforce bot, it's already leveraging the Salesforce API. And so I can do a bunch of really complex stuff without necessarily knowing the ins and outs of the Salesforce API. I just have to follow the documentation of that bot, be able to interact with the different objects in Salesforce, and boom, I can create my bot. So uh, definitely get in the habit of checking bot store as you're going through and doing your build. This is going to become really important as you start to move into A2019, and you can start to expand on the command packages that you have available to you. And it's going to be a lot more of a natural process to going to bot store, seeing if there's commands that are available that might help out with what you're trying to build. 
I then go through and do my building and testing. And we did this last week. I'm very much a proponent of iterative testing. So as I build certain components, I will test them. I don't want to go through and build, you know, 40 lines of code and then like, oh, I'll test at the end and find out that I had an error on line two that made a lot of my other lines a total waste. So I go through and I do a lot of that um, that iterative testing. The other thing that's really important when you're doing your testing is to test on a bot runner that is not the machine you developed it on, right? The, the goal for most of these bots that we create is to run headless someplace, right? Meaning it's running on a server or a virtual machine and it's not going to have someone sitting there watching it or, or monitoring it for the most part, right? Some obviously attended automation is, is kind of a different approach there, but um, I want to make sure that my bot can run on whatever machine it needs to and also that any prerequisites that need to be there for my bot to run I'm at least checking for as a part of the way the bot starts so that the bots not just gonna have a hard failure so I either want to install those prerequisites automatically as a part of the bot uh, as I'm checking for them or I want to make sure that the bot is failing in a way that's you know pretty graceful so that if a prerequisite isn't there like oh Google Chrome isn't installed here that uh, I can have a meaningful error message so that I'll know or whoever's running my bot will know, oh yeah, I gotta set up that bot runner with that particular application. So that's that's definitely a part of the build and test process. We didn't go into actually running it on a bot runner um, this past week in our in our uh, AA Illustrate session, but that's definitely something that, that can trip a lot of developers up. So make sure that when you're doing your testing, you're testing not only on your local machine, but also on a, on a bot runner. And then finally, it's the deployment process where you know, likely you'll deploy to your development environment, test it there, deploy to a test environment where you might have dedicated testing that's isolated from the developers, and then finally a deployment to production. So as a kind of second half of this and to build on the point that I mentioned, uh, I want to talk some about BotStore because I think a lot of people aren't familiar with it and are maybe not using it in the way that I am or the way that I might suggest. So I want you to be familiar with that. I want you to be more comfortable with going and looking there or at least making that a habit of, of part of your bot build process. So the first thing we want to look at is BotStore from a consumer perspective. And what is BotStore and why should a consumer care? Um, the Automation Anywhere answer is that the bot store is the world's largest RPA marketplace. There's over 800 bots in the bot store and there's been over 100,000 downloads since inception. So it's a really big marketplace for a ton of bots. Uh, it's also the only RPA marketplace with a bot security program. And I know that comes up with a lot of enterprise clients and likely comes up with you know smaller clients as well. But, you know, hey, I'm downloading this bot. How do I know it's clean? How do I know it's safe? How do I know, you know, it's been secured, stuff like that. So the bot security program is there to give you that kind of confidence. And that's something that doesn't exist in other RPA marketplaces. The Micah Smith answer to why should I care about bot store from a consumer perspective is that it's an excellent place to find super creative content to use for your own bot builds. And so I kind of mentioned that in our in my own, you know, personal bot building process, but I will go there to help me speed up my bot building times. I'll also go there to make use of the expertise of others. So like I mentioned with that, uh, the Salesforce bot that I was building that accelerated the build process for me tremendously because I was use, using someone else's bot to help uh, me interface with that Salesforce API. The other thing obviously is that it's it's a great place to find really creative solutions to problems. I'll go there and I'll look through some of the bots. Hey, this sounds pretty interesting. I'll try that out. Um, and, and I'll pay attention to the way that the person who built it, um, the way that they did things. And maybe it will clue me into some things I could be doing better. So it's definitely as you're continuing to learn and even if you're an experienced developer, it's a good place to go and check out some of the content and see what's available. It also provides a great way for you to extend on the current capabilities of either version 11 or A2019. Um, you can go there, find bots that are related to artificial intelligence, cognitive automation. And so that allows you to really accelerate your own digital transformation journey as you start to work with uh, your RPA application. And then I think we would both uh, answer that enabling bot builders and from both business and IT to expand on the existing command set of Automation Anywhere is a huge lift to uh, anyone involved. And so as we think about the bot store, I would think of 
the the consumer side as both some who are really IT focused developers and then some who are you know business developers or citizen developers people who maybe don't come from a traditional IT background but are building bots and that's awesome so I look at it like we're enabling both of those groups to be able to do things they maybe wouldn't be able to do otherwise right if I'm a developer and I'm really experienced but I don't necessarily when I have to go learn Salesforce API or learn some other API, I can just leverage what's already there and then that can accelerate my build process. If I'm a, a business developer or a citizen developer, um, I'm having access to stuff that maybe I wouldn't have been able to use before, right? Because someone else has built this connection to uh, an Azure service or an Amazon AWS service. Like now I have the ability to use a lot more stuff than what's available as the standard commands for automation anywhere. So for my benefits, we talked about some of these already. Um, I can speed my development up to 70% and half the cost while integrating intelligent and reusable components. Uh, again, you'll find that some of these bots that you download from Bot Store, you'll reuse over and over again in many of your bots. Uh, we'll talk about a couple examples of that here in a second. I can also learn how different commands are used. So especially as you're learning this or as you're starting to explore on your RPA journey, Download some bots from Bot Store. See how they're implementing different commands. See how they're using the REST commands versus see how they're using a Metabot for usability. Go check those things out. Um, they will help you as you begin to learn and you can kind of dissect those bots and run them, see how it works. They all have documentation as well. So that can help you to really understand how to accelerate your bot building. Also lowered maintenance costs, right? So if I'm building something against an API, um, I'm going to not have to update that quite as often as I might have to update something that's built off of screen scraping and uh, a user interface. That's normally the case. I mean, obviously I say that with an asterisk, um, but that should help me to have a much more stable bot. The other benefit there is that the vendor or provider of that particular bot will continue to provide updates to that bot. So I've got it, I've downloaded it, I see that you know something changed with the Salesforce API, something changed with the a uh, particular Oracle application I'm working with. The vendor has then updated the bot. I can download the new version and I should be good to go. I don't necessarily have to figure out what's changed or what's different on my own. And then finally, uh, we mentioned this already, but deploying with confidence. So this is the first RPA marketplace with the bot security program to make sure that bots are developed with cybersecurity and application security best practices. And so you'll see a little shield icon on the different bots indicating their um, bot security level and if you're interested in learning more about the bot security program you can go to bot store at automation or bot store dot automation anywhere dot com and uh, and see the bot uh, security program there so I want to highlight a couple bots that I find particularly interesting and talk about why I think so uh, and I would suggest all of you to check them out if you're if you're brand new to some of these so the first is a utility bot which was developed by automation anywhere for changing date and time formats I have found this one incredibly helpful. Um, you can change, you know, convert date time formats. You can see the difference between two dates. Um, you can add to a date. So if I needed to, uh, let's say, set a reminder for myself to do some kind of customer outreach after 30 days, I could have the bot automatically schedule that on my Outlook, right? Take the day uh, of today, go 30 days out, you know, set up a new meeting, send me an invite. So I could have that kind of stuff done directly using this bot. And so if you're not familiar with doing date time operations, I can tell you it can get really complex, especially when you're trying to do it all yourself. If I'm trying to add a day to a particular date, there's a lot of things I have to think about. Is this a day or is this a month with 30 days or 31 days? Is this a leap year? We just had one of those like a couple days ago. So those are a lot of really complicated uh, situations you have to think through when you're building this kind of logic it's best to just download this and then leverage it however you want. You can make use of doing time conversions and things like that. Uh, Excel utilities. So this one is really helpful. This was developed by a vendor RPA man. Uh, it allows you to do a lot of advanced operations on Excel. You can do pivots, you can use images, you can do formatting. There's also sheet and workbook, uh, workbook modifications. The coolest thing about it is there's no need for Excel to be installed on the local bot runner. And so this one is super helpful if you, you know, want to be really concerned about your licensing, especially with Office 365 or Microsoft Office. Uh, I can use this bot without having to have Excel installed, and then I can do whatever I need to on my spreadsheets to, 
you know, do manipulations the same way you would normally, uh, as well as advanced operations like changing colors and fonts of things if I need to, or even pivots. The Salesforce bot, uh, I highlighted this one because this is one I've been using recently, but you can do create, read, update, and delete operations on both single or bulk objects in Salesforce. Uh, I'm still, you know, kind of learning Salesforce myself, but I found this bot to be extremely helpful as I've started to learn that I can insert objects or insert custom objects or insert standard objects or I can read from objects and query objects. So uh, it's really cool to integrate this within your Salesforce application um, and then be able to have your bot talk to Salesforce in a more intelligent way. That's not to say that you can't use this plus screen scraping. So when I was building some of these bots that we were working on, uh, I would do inserts into Salesforce, but then I would go and do refreshes in Salesforce to make sure that the data was showing up like I expected uh, and kind of for a, more of a visual view because mine was more of a demo. But um, you can definitely use this as a part of the back end, but then also still do front end uh, Salesforce automation as well. Uh, entities from text. So this is one from a vendor called Meaning Cloud. Um, this is how you can start to really extend your RPA from rule-based automation to starting to look into more cognitive automation. And a, a first step for many people is IQBot, where you're starting to add that intelligence of being able to do uh, extraction of data from images. This is another cool example where you can start to um, analyze text. And so when we think about good opportunities for doing cognitive automation, I think of something like a, uh, a ticketing system, right? Let's say that I have an inbox that is my IT support and people just send emails there of like some of the most random stuff. It could be my account is locked out. It could be that my machine is having issues booting. It could be that my licensing for this particular software seems to have run out. And so people will send those kind of emails to that inbox and then it becomes someone's role to look through all of those emails and then figure out like, all right, what department do I need to assign these to or what person do I need to assign them to based on what kind of problem it is. And so using a bot like this, you could say, all right, I'm going to do some entity extraction from the uh, emails that we get. I'm going to have the bot analyze that text and I'm going to have the bot try to assign these tickets to the correct group. And in that way, I don't have to necessarily assign them all myself. If I have a high level of confidence in what the bot's doing after I've played with this uh, entities from text bot a little bit, then I can start to do those assignments uh, on its own. And so then I don't have to worry about doing that. The bot can automatically take care of, oh, this person is locked out. Let's send it to this individual. Or maybe we even trigger another bot to take care of unlocking that account based on who sent the email. So, you know, you can get really creative with that, but that's another cool bot to check out. From a developer perspective, uh, Bot Store is really interesting as well. So the first thing that I point out for developers is the fame and fortune, right? And that's kind of a funny way to say it, but bots on the Bot Store can either be free or paid based on an annual subscription. And so if you're interested in developing bots that you want to sell on the Bot Store marketplace, you have the ability to do that and you can sell those for uh, whatever within a, a meaningful uh, degree, you can sell those bots and uh, you can list them for sale. And then uh, obviously any Automation Anywhere customer would have the ability to go and pick those up. The other angle for developers is that you have the ability to demonstrate your experience and your expertise by listing bots on BotStore. So I say this because I get developers that will reach out to me and say, hey, I'm looking for a job in RPA or hey, I'm a, I'm a new student. I've been developing bots for a little bit, but I don't have a ton of experience. How do I get a job being an RPA developer? And the number one thing I always tell them is to build bots and put them on bot store. Whether they're free or paid kind of really doesn't matter. But if someone comes to me and they says, hey, hey, I want to be a bot developer. Uh, I have 15 bots listed on bot store. Go check them out. I can go and look at that person's work before they even come in for an interview. And when they do come in for an interview, if I've already looked at all of their bots, then we're not necessarily talking so much about what their experience is like so much as you know kind of moving into advanced topics of like hey tell me about why you did this development this way or tell me about how you would solve this kind of problem instead of like the really basic of like me asking you hey what command do i use to interact with the web object um you know you can really set yourself apart from other developers by having a catalog of your work on bot store and so i very much encourage developers to do that i've put my own bots on bot store obviously they're not tagged to me um, but there's some bots that I've written that are on bot store right now. And, you know, you can go check those out as well. 
global customer reach. So the other cool thing about the bot store is that obviously we have, you know, really a global marketplace. Um, there's customers on pretty much every continent at this point and probably not on Antarctica. I think that would not be a true statement, but in a whole lot of countries, there are customers, right? And so you're looking at a worldwide marketplace when you think about listing your bot for bot store, either free or paid, right? Uh, there's, there's customers all over the place that are looking to accelerate their own digital transformation. And so they might uh, download your bot and use that as a part of their builds. And then finally, uh, for protecting your intellectual property, if you are doing paid bots, there is uh, license management and uh, infrastructure in place to protect your code. So you do have the ability to obfuscate your bots or metabots if you don't want that logic to be available for paid bots. And so, you know, if I've developed something and that's, you know, my intellectual property of the way this actually gets done, you do have the ability to protect that code when you're selling it so that someone doesn't just rip you off and take your code. Um, you do have the ability to protect that. So that is a part of the developer marketplace. So to get started with bot store, the first thing you want to do is uh, get started on your request. We'll talk about the page to do that here in a second. You can then start to build your bot. You can integrate license management and code protection if you're doing a paid bot. If it's a free bot, you wouldn't have to worry about that part of it. Uh, you would just go ahead and build and do your testing and everything like that. You would also uh, follow the best practices for optimizing your listing um, as far as putting documentation there, having some of the benefits and skills of your bot listed out. So um, you, would, you would post it and then be able to find it on that marketplace and share it with others. So if you're interested in developing for or even checking out bots on BotStore, go to botstore.automationanywhere.com. If you see at the top here, there is a link for uh, the bots. Obviously, you can see them by business process as well as by categorization. If nothing else, I would strongly encourage you just to go look at some of the different categories and see some of the bots that are there. There's some really creative stuff. There's some cool stuff. Even if you don't have necessarily a use case for it now, you might go check some of that stuff out and then find that, hey, that was actually a really cool idea and now I think I can tackle a business problem that I didn't know about before. So check that out. And then on the uh, developer section, there's a link for developers. Uh, that will walk you through the process of requesting a global ID for starting to create a bot. Uh, it also has some links for how you can uh, go through the uh, GitHub repository where we have kind of like a, a dummy bot shell that you can start with as you're developing your bot. And that will make sure that as, as you submit the bot, it goes through as cleanly and smoothly as possible. The other thing I'll point out is uh, there is a point on the bot store that says bot idea. So if you click that, there's a little form that you can fill out. And if you have a bot idea for the bot store, but you don't think you can build it yourself or... Uh, you don't find that it's available otherwise, click on that bot idea link and you can share that bot idea with us and we will try to work with different vendors who we know are developing bots to, uh, to create that for you, right? And, and if they find that, yeah, that's actually a really good idea, we should try that or there seems to be some recurring patterns here, um, then that will lead to the creation of the bot. So even if you, you know, don't necessarily feel comfortable with developing it yourself or you're not the kind of person that's going to build a bot, um, share that bot idea there and, and we'll see if we can get someone else to build it. The final thing I want to mention here, and you can't really see it here on these listings, but each of these listings is from a different vendor. And that vendor could be a service provider. Uh, that vendor could be an individual. But from a developer perspective, I think BotStore is also beyond a way to set a reputation for your experience. It's a good way to get your name out there, right? So if you're an individual building bots, Get your name out there. It could lead to new jobs or new opportunities. If you're a vendor who is building bots, get your name out there. It could lead to uh, additional service contracts that you might be able to deliver for people in the future. They've seen evidence of you being able to build bots. They've seen evidence of you building quality stuff on bot store. You know, your name is in the door um, and, and you'd be able to contact that uh, individual or that company that bought your bot to uh, see if you can possibly provide better service for them in the future. So as a quick recap, uh, establish your own or you can mimic mine bot building process. And just like we walk through the six steps that I'm kind of going through when I build a bot, it may help to think through that. I'm very much like a, a formulaic kind of thinker. And so I'm going to think through exactly what my process is going to be for pretty much everything that I do, even these sessions that I'm preparing, right? I've got a template that I go through. I've got what the points I want to hit are. And so uh, that's just how I think, right? But 
uh, that could be something that you try to map out and think through as well. Uh, as far as bot store from a consumer perspective, like I mentioned, bots are a great place to accelerate your development. They can also be great to dissect and learn from as you're just getting started. And then from a developer perspective, um, bot store is a great way for you to be able to demonstrate your skill set, possibly earn revenue. Um, so definitely check out bot store from either perspective and see what's available, see how you can possibly contribute. Finally, uh, recap, uh, make let us make these sessions better, provide that feedback. We want this to be interactive. We want to know what you want to see. Like I said, there was that Twitter poll the other day. Uh, feel free to send messages to myself or the social team. Let us know how we can make this content as effective as possible for you. Okay? So that is it for this week. Uh, we will be back next week with another AA Illustrate session. For sure, let us know feedback. Let us know how these can get better. We want to make sure this is effective content for you. All right, I will see you guys next week or someone will see you next week. All right, go be great.